As I said, Dr. Schulteis goes beyond, explores what's beneath the philosophy, the, the, the existentialism, the possibilities, and, and what drives these artists to create these works of art, these films, literature, these books, what have you. And I was greatly influenced by him, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed and, and dreaded <laughs> <laughs> dreaded his class very much. You have to be on top of your game. He's like the coach. He's like the coach of, a, of a, say a football team or of a boxer. You know, he's the manager that does not let up. And he brings out, if you're ready to give, he brings out the best in you. He brings out what, what you are capable of. He brings out possibilities in you you may not have known you had. He has a wonderful, and I'm not sure if he's giving this out this semester, but there's a wonderful p paper he has. It's about entertainment versus art. And entertainment gives us what we want. Art gives us what we don't know we want. And art taps in a to into aspects of ourselves, but aspects previously unrecognized. And that's what Dr. Schalteis did for me, and that's why I gave him an acknowledgement in my Latest novel, To Live and Drink in L.A., which was based, well, not based, it's a, it, it, To Live and Die in L.A. was a famous film and a famous novel, and I just kind of, this is a story about a young man from the Midwest, and he comes out and it's humorous, it's like David Sedaris, Chelsea Handler, Charles Bukowski, that kind of thing. But I gave an acknowledgement to, to Dr. Schulteis, um, thank you, Dr. John Schulteis, for introducing me to me the possibility of controlling my own existence. And that's what Dr. Schalteis did for me through film, through literature, through his class, through 309. And again, thanks to, you know, I mean, live in, not only living in Los Angeles, I mean, part of what to live and drink in LA is about is how growth and self-discovery is possible, even in a town a lot of people feel is shallow, you know, full of shallow people. I, yes, there are shallow people out here. There are shallow people everywhere. But also there are good people. And there is potential for growth and, and to discover aspects of yourself. Anything's possible. Right. Most most authors put truth in their work. You know, as you know, I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. Most most novelists, most filmmakers, they their works of art are extensions of themselves, and sometimes amplified extensions. You know, so that was basically what this novel is, and it was a great process for me. Um, I enjoyed writing it very much, and uh, I'm enjoying the publication very much. It's selling, and, and all kinds of people are kind of attracted to it. I enjoy filmmakers take risks, so that's the, you know, I mean, Barbe Schroeder, when he, I mean, ironically, you, you ask about uh, authors who are influences, I mean, both David Sedaris, Chelsea Handler, you know, uh, Charles Bukowski, who wrote about the LA Underground, what have you, of course. Um, Charles Bukowski wrote a screenplay, and Barbe Schroeder had to actually threaten to cut off one of his pinkies in order to get the rights released from this one film company to another film company. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. I admire people who go, who go to the limit for their art, and in, in, in doing so, they go to the limit for themselves. They take a chance, they ride the winds of fate, and and they say, I have a vision, and I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it happen. And I mean, there's so many brilliant writers out there, and directors, and filmmakers with talent and with vision. 
so you know, it's hard to pick just one. But and as far as writers go, I mean, I, I enjoy any any writer who's willing to, to to have the guts to look at a blank page and say, all right, I'm gonna fill this with words, words that people may understand. I respect that.